frontier. This is Football Daft with Stephen Purden. Midfield dynamo and average actor. Chris Toll. Target man. Suspicious character. And... Right, welcome to Football Daft, the Daft of Scottish football podcast around. My name's Stephen Purden, and let's welcome the team. First, a man who missed the Rangers game at the weekend as he was too busy watching Little Mixies The Search. It's Grado. That's <laughs> absolutely bollocks. I never said that. I you never... said that Rangers Daft, haven't I? No, I never. I, I never said that. I said, I, I was out on Saturday night. Oh, oh, that, that. It was rough. I fell asleep. <laughs> I, I turned I turned on the Rangers game when I woke up. There was about ten minutes to go, um, so I, I saw the last ten minutes. But what I'm saying is, you were having a go at me because I never watched the game back. So right. don't try and twist this up. You were you were having a go at me because I never watched the rerun it or a, a recording it. I've not got Sky. No, so, no, 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 no. My point is, you've not got Sky, but mate, we can all watch a highlight. You can watch a highlight anything you want. Go to Rangers TV. You can watch sports scene. But but you were too busy pledging your allegiance. Little mix. Listen, it's a new show, it's fresh, it's exciting, <laughs> it reminds me of uh, Popstar's Arrivals, it's got that wee kind of novelty, kind of... Mate, mate, you know, mate, the Rangers game was a new fixture, it was fresh, it was exciting, we scored five goals. I watched the five minute hang on YouTube, I've seen all the <laughs> goals and all that, but I'm, I never had time to watch the full 90 minutes because I get tore into this Little Mix programme, which is, which is, it's gripped me. How long is it on? How long is it? Mate, it's on for Mate, right, basically what they're doing is they're trying to find somebody to support them next year on their tour. So the first one was they need to try to find a boy band. Second one was a mixed band. It's all that over 35s, you know. All that so it's, the, it's X Factor. It's X Factor with a twist. Because a little twist? mix of the judges. Like fucking X Factor even. And, 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 and they've got, it's the same kind of idea as you, you've got your villain. You've got your villain in the middle. I can't remember the name. Is it Perry? Perry Mates? Perry or something like that? Perry Mason. <laughs> Who's Perry Mason again? Why am I thinking that? Who's Perry Mason? Detective. Ah, what's Pe- Perry Edwards. Perry Edwards. <laughs> right, well, like, Perry, like Perry, Van Dyke kicking a bit. She's the, fucking, she's, the, she's the villain in it. Which, you know, she's all that. You know, we're good, but not today. You don't suit this band. Jess in the end. She's he a light hearted like, one. Well, I see the Simon Cow. Jess is like your Danny Minogue, your Sharon Osborne. She kind of. So it's just X Factor. Where's the twist? It's fucking it. Little Mix. Little Mix are like the stars of the show. Basically, what you're saying is you just want to sit and watch Little Mix for an hour and a half, mate. Aye. I would have had more respect for him if he just said that. I know. Fair play. Aye, I would have had more respect for him if he just said that, mate. I would have gave you it. <sighs> but. Whatever, mate, we know where your loyalties lie. Certainly not a far park, more than Little Mixies, the search. Okay, now moving on to introduce another part of the team. It is a man who this week will be delighted that Bologna have finally signed Aaron Hickey, as it means he doesn't have to talk about him on the rumour mill anymore. It's Chris Toll. Welcome, Chris. Thank you very much for introducing me that way. Mm-hmm. Stevie, Grado, John... When I sent you that video in the group chat, I honestly felt it was like it was like a weight off my shoulders. <laughs> right. But it what, a, what about that life. video? But is that not the cheesiest thing you've ever seen in your entire fucking life? It's brilliant. Have you ever seen a footballer looking as uncomfortable holding a fucking toy under his arm? <laughs> I mean, could you just imagine the Italians broken English going, we're gonna put you in with a Loch Ness monster, and be like, you'd be like, oh, are you serious, do you have to? Can I not just oh, hold up the oh, scarf? Mate, mate, he would be like me and you in Panto every year when he's been told to say something. We are like, he's got that. that. Sounds great, man. Aye, aye, that's it, aye. Oh, that's a great idea. I'm, I'm Everybody will love it. He's, <laughs> he's, he's went in, and he's had his debut, and he's absolutely fucking smashed it in his debut. Aye, aye. Straight in against Parma, a derby match, no less. Aye. And never put a foot wrong and get a well. I was going to say a standing ovation, but what a what a reception he got. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say a standing ovation. They couldn't in the fucking stadium. You see him? Just the five <laughs> the five cunts in the dugout. Like that, man. <laughs> class, class. Referee in that. Well done, Aaron. See you next week, son. Yeah. Good luck to the boy, man. Aye. Aye. Definitely. Definitely. It's a, a big step, especially an eighteen-year-old laddie out of his comfort zone, a whole new country, doesn't speak the language, 
that's a ballsy, ballsy move for me. I've got aye, to be honest with you. Aye, aye. Life experience. Life experience. He's gone Could in. you have done it at 18, Stevie? No chance. I'm a homeboy. I could never move away. Nah, I'm bad nah, for that. Nah, I, could, I don't think I could even move out of Coat Bridge, to be honest with you. I'm not even lying. It is a bit overwhelming, but it's good that it's that for them. Do you know what I mean? I think that's if you're going to go to a, a country, you know, at least they've got a kind of they've got a tidy lifestyle, went with the past and all that and the lasagna and stuff. So I think it'll be all right. <laughs> Never mind, you know, you could be going to somewhere like Cyprus, I it's warm, but what else you got hey, to do? Hey, that's like a, that's like they've, they've, they've got good tatties in Cyprus, yeah. that's, like, that's like Italian sitting going like that. I mean, he's he's the, the Italian boys made a fucking ballsy move, got to Scotland, but fair play to them, they've got fucking kilts and haggis and all that, you know what I mean? <laughs> fair play to them, have you ever tried a tatty scone? <laughs> They've got fucking, they've got bread with a funny crust on it and all that. Fucking, they call it plain bread and all that, you know what I mean? Mother's you ever had a slice of Mother's Pride with love pack? <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> and you know something? See, yeah, there, man, their sausages are fucking square, by the way. Go to the fish on the Mother's Pride. It's amazing. <laughs> I've got it sewn up. <laughs> He's going to have a tidy lifestyle with a lasagna and a pasta. <laughs> But it's a, 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 obviously the first thing I thought he was food, but you know what I mean? It's the Italians and let's go for him or that. Gredo, you're right. He's got, it, he's got it good there with the food and that, but he needs to watch it for the mafia. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right, so to, this week we're recording ahead of the European Games, but the big chat this week in Scottish football is the lower leagues. It's, there's no plans to delay the lower league despite the Highland League opting to pause its resumption until crowds can return. The Scottish Championship, League 1 and League 2 are due to begin in a couple of weeks, but the Highland League is not prepared to start until at least the 28th of November. Clubs in the lower leagues were asked by Scottish Football's joint response group last week how long they believe they can survive without crowds. And there have been warnings from managers and chairmen that clubs could fold before Christmas without crowds. I think, it's, I think it's really, I think it's really worrying, and also it's a bit frustrating. I know what's happening with the world right now, but if there's anywhere where they could probably introduce a wee bit of normality and help clubs being funded is getting some fans into the grounds because they, a lot of it's open space. Mm. They don't attract thousands and thousands. Mm. I think that's a. Do you know what I mean? Come on, it must be so frustrating because you know what? That if, if I heard that the radio at the weekend they're going to try and turn the government for money, man. That's the last thing the government will give money to is FIPA. So, I think you're, you're right. You're absolutely right in what you're saying there, Gredo. However, see the fact that there's no seats and it's like there's loads of space and all that. That is what's going to make people all bunch together. You know what I, I mean? When you're at the I, when you're at the football, you want to be in amongst uh, the crowd. You know what I mean? And I, with the greatest will in the world, if I went down to Albion Rovers, there's no way that they're going to space people out round the, round the stadium. There's I don't no know, way. man. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I'd argue with that in terms of families. Everybody that's in your bubble sitting on one side of the stadium, it's obviously there's... I think, you really what, think, what I'm so? is, I think if, if you've got an all-seater stadium, it's easier to to regulate that. You know what I mean? It's easier to, to like, kind of space people out and make sure that they're still being spaced out. The but bottom line it, is, but man, if, to, to space them out, to stop them sitting together, it's just a domino effect. You're going to need to hire folk in. There's going to need to uh, be... COVID, COVID marshals and all that. Aye. It's, it's, it just all boils down to the one thing, money. And it could it, it could end up... Having having a crowd could end up costing them more money than not having a crowd. Mm-hmm. It's, it's frustrating. Come, so come Christmas, man, there's going to be... At least three, four teams go to the wall with this, man. Definitely, look like, definitely, man. Right, guys. Scotland squad has just been announced for the playoff game against Israel. Eh? Yeah? Well, um, you love biggest, international tournaments, didn't you, Cotto? I'm the biggest fan of an international tournament that, that, that is going. <laughs> and, I, and I know that these fucking games are a necessary evil, but why does there need to be so fucking many of them and so often? I... I concur one million percent. It is depressing. It's taking like, a lot of time, isn't it? Aye. I mean, it feels like the season kind of get a proper run. The season starts. We, we've already stopped him once. We stop yeah, again. It's like, come on, the fuck, man. How many internationals do they need? And it's push. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's push. Surely, surely it's better than, you know, because international are obviously set out by 
FIFA and all that sort of stuff, but surely playing like the Nations League is better than playing these meaningless friendlies because there's at least something and it's competitive and there's something to play for in these things. And then obviously we've got the game against Israel, which could get us into the Euros, you know? See, John, you're going to... Here we go. Is, this is my lower league mentality. Here's the old fun fan, right? supporters. You're, the fan. you're buzzing for the international. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. But it, I mean, there is a, the total disparity between old firm supporters, and it's not all old firm supporters, but most old firm supporters don't give a fuck about international football, and they'd rather get on with the. With the... I just want my players to arrive back home without an injury. Yes. Oh, hundred percent. So da, Chris. So da. <laughs> <laughs> But it is, it's like... Well, the, the only silver lining for us is the break's coming at a good point. We can maybe get Aribo back, Jack, right. Fett, and Ruth, and I'll be happy with that for the game, for the old firm, as soon as we get back. I mean, I didn't even know that this was happening until you, you hear the manager say, like, um, oh, he should be fit after the international break. And you go, ah! When? Uh, <gasps> Ryan Fraser's in the squad, and Ryan Porteous is in the squad. But then also, he's, he's uh, I like talking about the old goalies, Robbie McCrory. I wonder how he's doing at Livingston. I put, I, they were saying he was getting the blame for quite a lot of the goals. Um, what was it, 3 0 last week at Parkhead? And I thought he'd done, I thought he'd done all right, uh, Robbie McCrory. What Aye, the fuck? Oh, they, 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 they beat 3 2 at Parkhead. Ah, sorry. Aye. Aye, but anyway, he, he did have quite a good game. Anytime I've seen him, he's always made a, a few good saves. Because when you're the Livingston goal, you're going to have to. You know what I mean? During the match, right. you're going to have to. So he's he's coming on. He's coming on well. Definitely. Uh, so Ollie McBurney's back in the in the uh, squad. So is Lawrence Shankland. Goals Shankland in there. I I see McBurney. I I don't really think he's that great to be honest. He's in there on the strength that he's playing football in England for me. I just I've never really rated him to be honest. I don't really rate him. I think he's absolutely dynamite on Twitter. But I just don't rate him as a football player. He's good at noising your fans up at times. I, I only really know him through social media, which is a yeah. shame. But well, I, do you know what, Gredo? See the fact that you only know him through social media, that tells you about how good he is at fucking football, doesn't it? <laughs> I, I don't rate him, man. Much did he go to Sheffield United for? They paid a good wad for him as well, didn't they? I mean, it was 7.5, I think. Aye, nah. No, but international break. Good luck to Scotland. Hope they get the results. And it would, it would. Be good to see Scotland at a major tournament. I remember coming home from school, watching it with my dad, France 98, John Collins scored the penalty, yeah. the last time we've been there. It 10th of June 98. Right. It'd be great to see them back. It'd be great, but we shall see. And here's a wee question for you as well, Troops. It's 34 years since Fergie took over at Man United. He was there for 26 years, but in a recent interview, he says he only managed four world-class players. Can you name them? I don't want to, I don't want to ruin this segment, right? I've no I've no read it or anything like that, but I'm pretty certain that I could guess who the four were. I think I could as well. I would put I would can't I'd give one Skulls. Two Gigs. Brian, Rob, Brian Robson. Three. But Giggs and Ronaldo, I'd say. Well done, Stephen. All four, yeah. Fuck no, he never got all four. He I, took a one and I got one. We've done this as a team. Brian, yeah, well, I've posted Brian Robson, but I did and say I Brian Robson, but how can you say that Brian Robson wasn't world class? Turn it up, Fergie. What do you know about football? <laughs> <laughs> right, so on the show today, we welcome Big Bad John, his former Arsenal, West Ham, and of course Celtic striker John Hartson joins us. And it's Chris's turn on the Legends Lottery, and it'll be a tough act to follow, as Gordon Smart last week gave us some brilliant stories, eh? What do you think, Toa? Oh, he's got the phone out, he's got the phone out. Oh, Look, the phone oh you're out. struggling, to. Oh, the hat's getting pulled back, the phone's Aye. out. What? Oh, what do you think? Oh, I'd I don't never know. miss a Legends Lottery, man. It's fucking easy. <laughs> 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 Just get on any cunt in all day. I don't even know somebody that's been a mascot. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's how bad things are getting here. <laughs> Uh, but, and talking of Gordon, his father-in-law is Jim Leishman, Leishman, and so on the big question we ask, what footballer would you like as a father-in-law? That's a weird now, question, man. Yeah, John's fucking been having a few beers and he's been thinking that one. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, it, was like, it was actually... Do you, know what, do you know what the good thing is? See, when they asked Neymar this, he just said he's ender. <laughs> 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 But now let's go to the man who has more spies than MI6. It's Chris Toll and his rumour mill. Pause for jingle. Here comes the rumour mill. And I'm not even trying. 
Crystal Palace are poised to test Celtic's resolve <laughs> to keep hold of Odds and Edward with a formal bid for the 22 year old before the closing of the transfer window. Arsenal and Bright are also snuffing around. What's going on there, Tom? He's no starting, isn't he? He's no, he's no starting game. Mate, see the last two games when he's come on, he's looked as if he'd rather be anywhere else in the world. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't know what the script is, but as I mentioned before, it, losing him now for me is no as big a worry because a Yeti for me looks as if he's going to score goals all the fucking time. Okay. He's just that sort of guy. He puts me in mind of Gary Hooper, to be honest with you, and I'm I'm quite excited to see how he does going forward. Um, but uh, he, he's, he's not yourself. He's a fit with uh, with Morelos since mm-hmm. last year. These players are going to be linked away all the fucking time. So, you know, I take everything where you pinch of salt, to be honest with you. As you should do if you're listening to Chris Tolden or no. So, <laughs> when the United are tearing signing Scotland striker Mark McNulty on loan for Reading, the 28 year old still out of favour with the English club and he's uh, on his return from a similar spell with Hibs last season. Um, Leeds United are looking for a, twi- uh, for a move for 23 year old Rangers winger Ryan Kent if they fail to land top target Daniel James from Man United. However, last night I believe Leeds. Leeds! had a bid for Daniel James accepted, a loan bid for Daniel James. So, oh, um, I, I think that that Ryan Kent rumour can get put to bed now. That's ideal, um, isn't it? Aye. St Mum say that they've rejected a substantial offer for fellow Scottish Premiership Club Hibs for their captain Kyle McGuinness. He's not played since January after a suffering a cruciate ligament injury. St Mum say that he's an integral part of the club and have no desire to sell the player. Um, which probably means that they're in good stead financially I would think as well mm-hmm. um, Celtic are preparing to do a battle with Ajax, Brighton, Hertha Berlin Leeds and Southampton to sign that's Ryan. some fight that, isn't it? that's a listen fight to listen to this one to sign Ryan Sessignon off right that's no happening is it but that's the exact sort of player that we need in it left back to be honest with you or left, uh, left wing back well of course Buddy Ben Davies and have just signed that boy for Real Madrid. So Sessignon's not going to get a game. He's got to go on the road, isn't he, man? He's not going to sell it, is he? Let's be honest. Rangers remain in talks about a possible move for South Africa midfielder Bongani Zunga after the 27 year old return to French League to action with him on the weekend but faced competition for Greek cracks, Olympiakos. (laughs) And clubs in Spain's top flight and all. Where did that come from? Cracks. What's that all about? Brilliant, good, good part of there for me. Anthony Strokes could be set to make a move to yeah. India to kickstart his career. The 32 year old, the Shell Talks with former Liverpool Red legend Robbie Fowler about joining him at East Bengal in the Indian Super League. Is that the league that David Robson plays in? Yeah, isn't it? We um, uh, uh, Roy, what you in Real Kashmiri? Uh, wow, man. That's a big, big. F- well, we're we'll talking a bit earlier about Aaron Hickey, going to. Oh, on you. Um, uh, and that's a big one, and uh, that's, it's a, that's not, a mega it's life not changer, in there right? before, or was it Iran or something like that? He, he played East, somewhere in the Middle East. It was, East Israel, it was Israel, I think. Israel, fuck's sake. Uh, right. They, uh, hearing, <laughs> funny talk about the Middle East. Um, we're hearing whispers of a Middle East consortium are looking to take over at Dundee United. The group, which is headed by former Airdrie striker Alan Lawrence, were finally uh, initially attracted by the nickname The Arabs. Now looks like set to make a multi-million pound investment with the first signing earmarked as Bologna's Aaron Hickey. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd fucking managed it this week, lads. The last two words. The last two fucking words in it. Right, G4 trips. Remember, if you've been in a road traffic accident, you're not at fault. G4 claims can make it easy for you. They can provide you with a complete accident management support that you require. They'll recover the cost from the at-fault party, sort out a like-for-like vehicle replacement, and they'll also organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of their approved body shops and return to you. Should your vehicle be deemed a write-off, they will recover the pre-accident value for your car. And right a big fat check for it, and best of all, it won't cost you a penny as they charge the app for insurance direct. 
four claims don't cold call. They don't buy data. And once they process your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. And the best thing is, Nicole and the team over there won't take their case on if they don't think that they can help. So if you've been in a road traffic accident or know somebody that has, go on to G4 Claims on 01698767172. That's 01698767172. Get them at notatfaultclaim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims. Not, Not at fault, fault claims. claims. Me. The Legends Lottery on Football Daft. It's the lottery where you win fuck all, aside from the knowledge that you know that the likes of Brian McPhee, Kieran McInespe, Scott Walker, you find out what they're up to. It's a Legends Lottery. I've got it, Sunday. No, you have no, man. I fucking have. Right, yeah. because what that happens is each week we try and get a former hero to come on the show. We've been doing pretty well. I've obviously missed a few shows, so... Well, I miss a few guests, should I say. So my, my, my ranking is very, very low. Bob, you're out in front, 23.4. You're looking good. Chris on 17.2. I'm on 12.5, but Toe has been buffing out all this show because he's Legends Lottery pulled out. And I've told him, look, like, just get empty, man. Empty all day. So, who have you got, Toe? Right, let's find out how God they done, first of all. Cause I... Aye, let's find out last week because now that I know that Toe's... Uh, He's, uh, he's struggling here with this Legends Lottery. I'm getting a wee bit excited that I could maybe eventually take on the... And the results, Connor, is it a five? You could do all right, because Gordon was very popular. Obviously, had some absolute brilliant stories about Martin Geisler, Stephen Graham, Noel Gallagher, <laughs> Jim Leishman. It was all in there. So Very Gordon, controversial, wasn't it, John? It was very <laughs> controversial, some of the stories that were in there. But Gordon scored really highly. A lot of people say we should get him back on as a main guest. Oh, yeah. stories. 4.6 grade, though. Fucking hell. So that takes you just a point below Chris, 17.1, you're up to Grado. Wow. So if Tom misses something this week, if he gets named to own, then is it next week I'm on? Two no, weeks? I'm on next week. Ah, I can't wait for a false night's time then, man. Tom, what's the deal? Where you go? Well, I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to put it out there. I had a very, very, very good guest. A very good guest. To the point where John messaged me and said, listen, mate, I don't want you bringing him on the Legends Lottery. I want him on as a main guest. He said that only just half, mate. He said that. Right. Now, he's fucking dinged me, hasn't he? <laughs> right. Honestly. How are you had feeling, a, mate? I had, a, I had him in and and grade all day. Going nuts at this one, and you come on, it's a belter. I'm counting up my five, my five point zero score for next week. So I messaged him yesterday. I says, "Be good for tomorrow." No response. I thought to myself, "Right, he's a busy guy. Understandable." I said, "Listen, mate, see if you're not good for tomorrow. Can you let me know so that I can organise somebody else?" And now I didn't want to organise somebody else without his say so. Because I don't want to fuck the guy about, basically. Right? Mm-hmm. And he's fucking, he's not even get back to me on that. Name See, him, name and shame him. Well, this is the deal, because I know it's an awkward position where you go, I don't really want to put him in it, or you go, I See, want to keep him is, for a surprise. For... I understand what you're saying, but see if I tell you who it is, people are going to think that I'm trying to bad, bad mouth this guy. No, I don't. Then. And oh, I'm, oh, not, oh. I'm not going to tell you who it is, because I do want to get him on the show somewhere down the line, right? And I don't want anybody thinking that I'm talking bad and I don't want him thinking that I'm talking about, bad about him either. So, basically, I've got somebody that can come on, but they can't, they, they can't, they can't come on now. That's the problem. Because, hey. because they're working. We are, we are filming this at half past four on a Wednesday afternoon. Everybody apart from us four are at their work. Do you know what I mean? Cool. You need to come on. You need to be on the button with this stuff, man. I've been put in that position before. Do you know what I'd do if I was you? I'd bring on John or something like that. John, how you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the Legends Party. How long have you been doing podcasts? Come on. You always need to have somebody up your sleeve. John, you might be my guest for the Legends Lottery. Let's welcome John to the show. Use right. him. Right, yeah, right. yeah I'm, I'll be your guest. Hi, everyone. Well, uh, where's Wait to introduce you. Right, Toe, before you, before you agree to us, remember... 
I mean, I shouldn't be doing this because if John, because John will end up getting a high rating here. Right. Fans, if you're listening and John comes on and you think he's talking shit, please rate it as how you feel. Right, so I've had to go to the back burner and pull out a legend that everybody that watches and listens to the show will know. This guy is an institution in Scottish football. He's, sport, he's interviewed people from all over the world. He's been on the radio. He's This guy is just, I, honest to God, I owe quite a lot to this guy. I do. And I want him to know how much I appreciate him and everything that he's done for me. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Football Daft, my legend for the week, Producer John. Fucking hell, Toe, you hit the bottom of the fucking barrel now, have you know? Listen, see when you're talking about yourself, what are you expecting folk to fucking give you a good score? No, no, but <laughs> like, aye, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, right, okay, boys, what, so what, that, what do I say? John, John how, yes. how long have you been doing this kind of work? <laughs> well, Stephen, thanks for asking that. Um, I've actually been in uh, the, the Tell radio... Tell us, a brief run in your career. I've been just... in the radio podcast <laughs> business for about 20-odd years now. I started my career at Beat 106, working alongside... Remember Beat 106? Beat 106? Yes. I worked on the breakfast show there with Des Clark and Heather Sutty. Remember her? Yes, yep. yes. Heather, yes. Legends. I then, I then worked with Paul Harper and Des Clark, and then I worked as... Head of music at XFM when Beat 106 changed to XFM. You were, you were head of music at XFM. Was that was my band. go-to station. Well, there you I go. Know. I was the one picking the music on that. Oh, uh, yeah. And then after that, I went down to Real Radio. Well, I went and worked on Gina McKee's Late Night Love. And I was, Late uh, Night with Gina McKee. Yes, and I produced the Love, Sex and Relationship show on Clyde One for a while. Big fan uh, of that. Scotland. And then I went down to Real Radio in Newcastle, where I was uh, what's in the Newcastle version of Real Radio down there. That then when your love of the Magpies became. Yes, I started supporting Newcastle when I was down there. Came back up to Scotland, worked with, on Bowie at breakfast with George and Shaban, and then I moved over to Heart and Smooth, and now I'm doing podcasts with you, Bob X. So there we are. Well, what, what, what footballers from all over the world have you interviewed? I've not interviewed any footballers. I told what you're talking about. <laughs> you know what I mean? You've, you've been part of shows that have had these people. Oh. Don't be a dick, all right? I used it's to watch... You own... I want to ask you, John. Yeah. I, I, want, I, 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 want to, I want to ask you, John. How does it work when you go for Beat 106 to XFM and they go like that? Fuck, man, John... Producer John, he's, his contract's running up, man. Let's fucking, let's bite while, while the iron's hot and all that. Let's get him and the team sign him up. Does that work? Does that <laughs> how it bites works? while the iron's hot, man? Who like the fuck a, bites like an iron? <laughs> it's like a bosun. It's like a bosun. I have to say, I did... Is there like a transfer one day in the radio game where... That's it. <laughs> You've been hearing it about John. You've been hearing oh, it. Listen, I, I've I mean, been, like, I've been the Jim the Hamilton on the radio. <laughs> I'm pretty much like the Jim Hamilton on the radio. A but, journeyman. I did work on Super Scoreboard. I did work on Super Scoreboard. Produced the Saturday show there with uh, DL and uh, Jim Delahunt and uh, right. you know. So, that. so you're you're telling us that you're doing a show with Gordon DL, and mm-hmm. you've not been able to get him on our show yet. Come oh, on, you could probably get gone. Gordon, Gordon, I'll tell you a story about Gordon DL. How'd you go? There was blinking. There was a chance. <laughs> You do the cash for kids charity auctions on Super Scoreboard when you get all the bids in and all that sort of stuff. So I was producing that. Uh, there was a bike, it was worth about a thousand pounds, came in and no one was bidding on it for some reason. You know, it was one of these things. And I was like, ah, what a built-in bike is. Listen, I'm going to put in, you know, no one was bidding it. So I thought, I'll put in 200 quid, 250 quid for it. You look like a bike guy. I said to DL, I said, this is what a, what a deal this is. Because no one's bidding it. I want to give money to the charity and it'll go to waste otherwise. And he went... Oh, but that's really good, yeah. Do you know what the bastard did? Outbid you? Outbid me at the last minute and put in 270 quid and took the fucking bike. <laughs> <laughs> but, John, that's brilliant. But here, listen, we, um, you must have came across, like, bands coming into the studio and all oh, that. Oh, aye, Come aye. on, who it geezer, Because you're the one that's always putting out the dirt on Twitter, on, on people you want to know, like, things that... And you know what? Listen, Trips, you are listening to the show, right? There's some stuff that, that we've said that we've had to cut out, our guests have said that we've had to cut out, right? But and John holds you prisoners. He argues the point that it should be getting kept in. You know what I mean? So, John... He's you a must, hack! Oh, you absolutely. Must, 
Absolutely. You must, have, you must have come across some absolute belters in your aye. Come on. Oh, God, aye, aye, aye. I mean, I've met, I've met a lot of like, quite famous people across the years. Robbie Williams, Charlotte Church, Dave Grohl. Did a, Dave, Dave, Dave Grohl. Harris, Calvin, Dave Harris, Church. Calvin Harris, uh, Usher, all these, all these kind of people. Um, Powell, oh, Amy Winehouse, met Amy Winehouse as well. Had a fag with Amy Winehouse. Um, got mistaken for a member of the View once. Um, I, to... I smoked a joint with Snoop Dogg once. <laughs> Did you? And your fellas, Chris... Bob? My dad's Bob and Compton. <laughs> oh, you get you some speeds after it. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, but I'm having a good again, time. I regale you, I regale you with a true story and you fucking ripped the living piss out me. For a, do you know I'm going to stop telling you my stories anyway? Like, so John, who is who's the best? Who's the nicest celebrity that you've met? The nicest celebrity. I like Charlotte Church. She was dead nice. She said uh, she said to me, "I made the best <laughs> cup of tea ever." Aye. Yeah. There you go. John, listen, we're going to cut us short because let's. Fuck for fuck for shite. Fuck for shite. Ian Hunt for, for picking up the slack for me, mate. I really appreciate it. Oh, and I'm be, I was being honest when what I said at the start. I'm I'm really grateful for what you've done for me, and I, I appreciate you. And thanks very much. It's right, you can keep your job, Chris. That's fine. Do you know that? Fuck you. See if he's can't be nice to somebody. Go and tell a fuck to yourself. <laughs> He's sitting there laughing at me, and I'm I'm gaining him some heartfelt emotions, man. You know what I mean? You just you just got a pair of dicks. <laughs> I love you. He's a guest. Sure guest. I'm never coming on this show again. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Football daft. Big question. Hey, troops. This week, the question has been inspired by last week's legend lottery guest, Gordon Smart. Remember, he was going about Jim Leishman? Yep. Gordon's fair on law. Remember, Jim Leishman, some crack stories, weren't there? Some right. Ah, it was superb, stories, man. About the Provost of Fife, including how he ended up in Spearmint Rhino and got a number for a lady called Destiny. It sounded like a cracking night. Anyway, we wanted to know if you could have a footballer as a father in law, who would it be and why? Grado, I'll come to you first. This is a hard question. This is a hard question. Who you would want as a father in law? Fucking stupid question. <laughs> oh! Don't talk to your fucking legends lot of guests like that. Don't. Sorry, sorry, John. Sorry, John. Sake. Uh, Thanks for everything you've done for me, but. <laughs> well, my girlfriend's father, he was uh, a Dross and Winton Rovers manager, and he's brand new, so I'll just stick with him now. <laughs> Look at that. I'm going to go for Jerry Polini. <laughs> Mate, seemed, like a great, seemed like a great guy. <laughs> Seems like he'd make a good father in law. But I'll be honest with you, the father in law I've got in house sound as fuck, so I better just leave it at that. Eh? I don't, you've got to go for one of your heroes, haven't you? You'd love like, someone like. I'd go with McCoy. No, or Ken McCoy. Alan McCoy, man. I've always said, man, could you imagine if you were, he was your father, never mean your father in law? Wow, man. Wow. Going right. for a on that. Good. Aye, it's <laughs> a Then I suppose it doesn't work out like that, doesn't it? No. No. What are you laughing at, too? Mate, I'm having a look through some of these comments for the punters. And let's go then. Hey, let's like, the myself. Go take it away, too. Go the first one. Go. Right, so, uh, first of all, we've got John. Um, he's come in and saying Bertie Old. With have great stories these days being a Celtic player and being part of the Lesbian Lines, also having a good drink and a laugh with him. It's funny, man, that a lot of these answers are going to be to go, they're good to go for a drink with, innit? It's like... <laughs> I bet there's one. That's a fucking topper, man. Uh, right, let's well, go, Ray. Stephen Thompson, just like every other fair in law, talks one load of pish. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> See, <throat. laughs> That's brilliant. The right, uh, next one we've got here is Bert, who says, Messi, because you'd be minted. Fair enough. Well, are you going to get money? Is that the way it works? I actually, do you know what? That's the society we live in, Graham. Shocking. What are you Shocking. talking about, Grado? You're sitting, living in your farm loss house at the moment. I know. A big mansion. <laughs> talking a little bit of the game the more. I want to see the bar he's going on out of the back. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> Craig says Ali McCoy's cause it would be some fucking laugh. <laughs> Alan, Alan says Gordon McQueen, no real interest in his stories though. More that'd be with his daughter Haley. <laughs> 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 Alan, uh, sorry, the bat guy says Brian Loudrop, so I could inherit his genes and be a beautiful bastard, right? The dark guy, your father in law, you don't inherit his oh, genes. Exactly, I don't. Right? <laughs> I don't know how things work in Ayrshire. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, maybe, maybe have a wee word to yourself about that one. <laughs> Joe says Marvin Wilson. Because I'd never tire of listening to him tell me about the only goal of the game he scored for the Glorious Diamonds against Celtic in the League Cup at the New Broomfield. That's a good shout. Uh, Davies <laughs> wrote in to say Alan McGregor, because at least then he's not going to shag my bird. It's time for the Pro Set Playoff on Football Daft for your chance to win a case of beer for two. Sad news, gentlemen. This could be the last one. What, the oh. last podcast? No, the Pro Set Playoff. This could be the last Pro Set Playoff. John, I'll, I'll send you the other I'll send you the other cards. It's for another season, but... Oh, good. Well, we, we might start again, but um, I, um, <laughs> Beer 52, are uh, going to take a wee break from us. Um, so, listen, if you like... If you would like to sponsor this feature, you can get involved, get in touch uh, on the Twitter, and yet all you have to do is give us some product to give away, and we can keep this going. Otherwise, it could be the last one. And on to play for the case of Beer 52 this week is Kevin. How are we doing? How are you doing, Kev? How's, how's it going, mate? Good, guys. Good. Cracking show as Kev, well. I'm, Kev, I'm sick of the sight of you, mate. I know, mate. It's like, we're well, best mates, not know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin was our previous pundit on Celtic Daft. Remember, if you want our bonus podcast, get on to patreon.com forward slash football daft. Always selling. The best one. <laughs> Always selling. <laughs> Brilliant. All of it. You were on the money there, John, weren't you? Oh, absolutely, man. absolutely. So we know Kevin from Celtic Daft. Um, Kevin, do you know the rules for the Pro Set playoff? Yep, I do. Right, 91, 92, Pro Set cards in front of me. You got a notepad there, Kevin, no? You got you gonna... my college stuff, mate. My college stuff. Oh, all right. right. Take a breakfast. He's college work to come on football. Dad, right. mate. Yeah. I like it. Absolutely. Uh, so you just yeah. have interest. I know you said after you, you you go to college for chefing and stuff like that. What do you need to study? Just like knives and flour. Oh, <laughs> the way I'm studying allergens. Oh, oh that's a big hang in it. Nuts. I'll like, just like. I'll get my own, my own restaurant. I don't want somebody killing her and getting a lawsuit, you know what I mean? Aye. Aye. So, basically, you're sitting there, at the moment you're studying a matter of life or death, mate. It could be. Uh-huh. Just I, I tell you what, Kev, she wants you to get the restaurant up and running. Your restaurant can take over this portion of the show. Right? <laughs> and what we'll do is we'll give you away a free meal every week at your <laughs> restaurant, right? <laughs> That's so good. You only need to pay four ninety five for the postage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll a free dessert and all. <laughs> So, uh, pro set cards in front of me from the 91 92 season. Um, we've shuffled them. I'll pick out players at random, read the description on the back. The first person to buzz in and get the right answer gets a point. First to two wins. But first of all, I need to hear those buzzers. So, Kevin, what is your buzzer going to be? Uh, since we're talking about food, I'll just say food. Food? Excellent. Right, okay. Uh, we'll draw out someone for you to play, Kevin. Who do you fancy today? I think not a guys are decent, so they'll probably beat me anyway, so anybody will do. Oh, what a lovely guy, Kev. If this is the end of this segment of the show, we're going out with a banger, a gent. Aye. Here we go. Let's draw the name out. Who you, who you support against, uh, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> Kev, you only need to look at the name, Kevin Devine. I think you know yeah, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're watching the video version of this, you'll see all the Celtic cops hanging up in the background. And it's Celtic versus Celtic. It is Chris oh, totally oh, going to be playing. That's a bummer. He'll do me. Here well, we go. Firm one as well there, Kevin. So, um... Case of beer on the line. What's your buzzer, Chris? Chris. Right, okay, we've got Chris versus food. All right, then. <laughs> That's a TV show. show <laughs> <laughs> First player out of the process playoff deck. Um, this person was the top scorer at Broomfield Park last season with 20 goals. Despite Chris. Chris. On coil. Former guest on the show, Mr. Oh, oh you're at it, too. Well nice done, one. Look, he's seen his eyes, look. 
Oh, are you sure he's not got a set of these cards, Santa? 1-0, <laughs> 2, <laughs> here we go, Kevin, let's get you back in the game. Oh, cracking player, this one. This player returned to his hometown club during the coast season from Chelsea after playing five seasons at Chris, Stamford. Chris, John Spencer. Wrong. I know who it is. Keep playing, right, we'll keep playing. He made his Falkirk debut in 1983 and appeared for the Bairns 64 times before signing for Chelsea in 1985. He returned to spend a period on loan at Brockville Park during season 1987-1988. This player is a speedy winger who can cross the ball with accuracy. Oh, I know who that is. Okay. Wait, flip the card over, Kev, so you can uh, see him. On you go. I don't know who it is. That's the player. Nah, that's not who I thought it was. Nah, I can't even see. What that player, see. man? What that player? God. Nah, that know. player is God. <laughs> Kevin <laughs> McAllister. Punch game. Absolute legend. Of I'm the- sitting here going, Pat Nevin. Pat Nevin. Pat Was it a Chelsea thing, mate? Aye. That's play- why I said John Spencer. Oh. Wrong, mate. Right, here we go. Next player out. This is uh, for the one for Chris. Do you need to get on the board here, Kev? Hopefully, one of you will get this one. This player debuted for Celtic in 1982 and is now in his 11th season. Within Chris. Years, Chris. Paul oh, he's something too early. Who is it? Ah, Paul McStay. Paul McStay. Santa. We're not giving away the beer this week. It is Paul McStay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know what? Since, this is, the, since this is the last week, you can have the beer, Kev. Oh, oh, that's, oh man, that's nice. Best pals. Would you tell <laughs> him if he was a Rangers supporter, Chris? That's the big question. Aye, man. It's the last week. What are we going to do with them? They'll go to a date. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. Um, I think so, you to come on there, eh? Right, but Kev, what you've got today, what you've got today is, right, see with one of these bottles of beer, you've got to make, you've got to make a meal, right, with one of the bottles of beer, and let us see what you make. Definitely. Excellent. He's on it. Have you studied beer, 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 beer recipes? Is that a wee... Oh. <laughs> uh, I'll come next, I think. A wee eel stew, a wee eel stew, that'll be nice. Eel stew, that's right, well done, John. Ten Good. points. Um, so remember if you want Beer 52 and you can cook with it as well as drink it yeah, get on to beer52.com forward slash daft the offer is still up there uh, you'll be able to get a case of beer for just £4.95 and remember Beer 52 monthly subscription service for beer source great beers from across the world that you can cook with and drink uh, small batch breweries they've got lots of good beers in there so get on board now beer52.com forward slash daft get your first case of beer for free Boys, I need to tell you about uh, a new podcast that's new to the Audio Frontier family, which I'm uh, producing. Uh, you boys will love it. It's called One Last Match. Um, it's another football podcast, but it's a wee bit more serious than this one. Um, basically, what we're doing is, you know how like, pros end up playing their last game of football, and it's like they don't realise they're playing it. Like John Hartson, for example, who we've got on the show today, ended up at West Brom, but didn't realise it was his last game of football. Well, basically, mm. it's like getting these expos and getting them to to do if they could redo the last game of football it's getting them to to do that that's cool man do you know who'd be perfect for that do you know who'd be perfect for that I would love to know the story behind Ali McCoy's last game at Ibrox Rangers I think were winning I don't know what they were winning if it was 1-0 or 2-0 and this was his last game and Bobby Williamson was a manager and Super Ali was warming up 8th minute, like, get him on, get him on for his last ever game, and he never put him on that. Was that for Kilmarnock as well? Uh, yeah, yep, yep. I, 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 Do you remember I, that, Bob? I remember it, mate. I that remember was insane. Was Why he never game, put him on? Yeah. It's fucking weird. Yeah, so basically, we give the chance for these ex pros to go away and like do it again. So they get to pick who they sit beside in the team bus, they would get to pick. They're starting 11, their formation, they get to pick what team they play against, they get to pick what stadium um, they play it in, they get to pick what manager they want in the touchlines for them. So That's they get cool. the last game again. Uh, it's a guy, Mark Benstead, you would have seen him on um, Sky Sports. He does all aye, the aye, aye. You see him pop on soccer Saturday. So Mark's uh, presenting it. We've got some amazing I guests lined up. Actually, John Hartson's one of the guests that we've got on it, funnily enough. Um, but beyond that, we've got the likes of... Stuart McCall for the Rangers supporters. Stuart McCall's on it. Um, we've got um, Gary Pallister. Emil Gary Hester, Pallister? That's Gary Pallister. Gary Pallister. Uh, Frank Sinclair's on there as well. And Jason McAtee as well. All real living yeah. what they would do for oh, John, this must be about a year in the making because I remember going to four and 
I remember you were talking with Mark Benstead. That's mad that he's officially going to go ahead with that. That's cool. So it's a year, uh, yeah. It's, it's been a year. It's been a year in the making, and it's going to be really good. So that's out next Wednesday, where you get your podcast. You can uh, subscribe uh, and get onto it now on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get. It. We're also on Twitter uh, at One Last Match and on Instagram and uh, Facebook as well. So get us at One Last Match, brand new podcast from Audio Frontier, coming next Wednesday. So get stuck in. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to Football Daft a man who has scored goals for everyone from Arsenal to Wimbledon to West Ham and to his country Wales. He moved to Scotland in 2001 and became an integral part of Mark Rennell's side, scoring one in, two, one in every two games and won three titles, two Scottish Cups and a League Cup, as well as Players Player of the Year. It's Big Bad John Hartson. What's happening, John? Thank you. I'm buzzing. All right, mate. mate. All I'm, good. I'm all I'm good. buzzing here. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm high as a kite, man. I'm I'm buzzing for this one. I think me and Gredo could get a day off. I think we're going Aye. to be in edgeways. <laughs> <laughs> this is and your day, that, Cole. This is your day. This, this is it. Finally, it's, it's all built up to this. I had murdered on the cloud a few months back. Now I've got John Hartson. Brilliant. Hey, you Frank McAvaney as well. Come on. Oh, aye, uh, but we all, we, all, we all wanted to hear the shagging stories for, for Frank, didn't we? So that was a get. Did he give you any? Did he give you any? No, <laughs> no, I don't be silly. <laughs> I know, I know. He's, he's very wise, frankly. He's, he's very sensible now, isn't he? Aye. <laughs> Where's his cards close to his chest? <laughs> or, or somebody else's chest, depending. <laughs> so how's things been, John? How you been getting on, mate? You been all right? Things are all right, mate. Yeah, things are okay. Um, I've got uh, my family here. I live in Edinburgh now, just outside Edinburgh. I've got uh, I've got five children, four four daughters, and my son. But um, my youngest three, um, you know, live live here with my, myself and my wife and. I think a lot of people think, you know, they think of John Hartson and they think, well, he lives this big, extravagant, you know, lifestyle and everything else. But I very much don't. I very much don't. You know, I'm from a, a very humble background, you know, from a council estate in Swansea, like a lot of us are from council estates. Yeah. And, and I genuinely, that, that's what I like to do. I, I, I look after my family. Um, I do my work on the weekend. I've got a little bit of work this year with Sky. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I'm bringing out my own podcast uh, next week. Oh, wait a minute here, oh, hold on. Getting on. Hold the bus. This is, this, is, this is an ambush. This is just a big advert for you, Hartson, isn't it? No, it's not. I've done, I must have done about 30 podcasts during lockdown. You have? I've noticed rang, that. A guy rang me last week, Grado, and he said, look, John, he said, you know, what, why don't you just do your own? And I'm like, well, I never really thought about it, but I, I think podcasts now, you know, especially with the lockdown and everything else, and People have to stay at home and, and work at home and everything else. And, you know, you can't travel big distances. And yeah. I think people are listening to podcasts now more, more than ever these days. Oh, definitely. It's, it's, I think it's taken over. See the likes of like your Saturday Night Live and maybe watching Jonathan Ross on a Friday night. People now are going on podcasts. That's where they get your, your interviews and, and they're longer. They're, you don't need to worry about telecompanies and what you're saying, any restrictions. They're a lot more natural. Aye. Yeah, yeah they it's... are. Yeah, I think... I think radio was a lot more personable anyway than, than television, mm-hmm. 100%. You know, I actually enjoy doing the, the radio actually more than being on the television, to be honest with you. My, my, my mum always said I had a good face for radio anyway. <laughs> so how's Sky doing? How are you, you getting on at Sky, mate? How's all that going? All right. Um, I've always, since, since I retired um, in 2008... I had my health to cope with, you know, obviously testicular cancer spread to my lungs and onto my brain. And it was something that I needed to get stronger. First of all, I needed to get through that, that uh, horrendous period of my life where, you know, I was really under a lot of pressure at one stage. I was, I was lucky to come through because I, I'd been so ignorant of the lumps on my testicles. I allowed, my te- I allowed the cancer to spread from testicular cancer to my lungs and onto my brain. So... At one stage, I needed two emergency brain operations. And after that, then you go into a, a chemotherapy program. Um, you've got to get yourself stronger. You just hope then that everything stays away. Um, not, not a case of secondary and things come back and reappear. So I was very blessed in terms of being given a second bite at life, really. And it's totally changed me. It, it's changed me as a personality. 
It's just the simple things in life uh, that I, I respect and appreciate, to be honest. You know, time with my family, time with my friends. You realise who your friends are when you're going through that difficult period. Yeah. Of all the players and all the teams and the supporters I, I'd met over a 20-year career, there's probably only about four or five that were actually around my bed. And no doubt they, they, they spared, a, you know, they were thinking of me and everything else. But yeah. you do realise and you put things into perspective after that. And, and that's what I've done. It's, it's, it's changed me immensely, my experience with cancer. So it's kind of, it's why they ones, mate, obviously gives you a kind of outlook, different outlook, and you feel like you've got a second chance almost. You do feel as if, um, you know, you, you learn from the way that you were and uh, you appreciate the fact that you, you've got a second bite at it. Mm. And, um, you, you, you know, for, for, the, for a child um, to go through life and lose a parent and things like that, I was thinking how it would affect my family if I was to go. Um, if I was to lose my life, how would it affect them going forward with their lives? And, you know, there's lots and lots of things. And we all want to live. We've all got reasons to live and go on and have bright futures and be healthy. You know, it's the one thing that, that, um, that nobody wants is, is a long-term illness. So, you know, you look at people like, you know, lots of people like Doddy Weir at the minute and, 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 and obviously Fernando Rickson, who I played against, really nice people, gentlemen, and, and, and Doddy Weir's fighting uh, motor neuro's disease. And, and it took Jimmy Johnson as well, uh, passed away through, you know, and, and you think to yourself, you know, you mourn about the weather and this, that, and the other. And, and as I said earlier on, you, you mourn all the time, people about things. But ultimately, when you put it into perspective, if you've got your health, you know, that's, that's all you need. If you haven't got your health, pretty much so, then then, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously not a nice experience. So I was very blessed to have come through my personal battle. And as you said, it's different for me. It's different now because I, I, I don't want the extravagant stuff. I've lived a nice life. I've been able to, to travel and I've been able to play football for a living. Mm -hmm. But now it's just a case of just living ordinary and looking after my children, dropping them down at the schools in the right times. And I nip down to Wales and... I nip down to my local pub in the village, and that's what I do. Uh, I don't mix with footballers anymore. Cause I'm not. I'm out of that circle, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's to look after my family and stay healthy. That that that's all my goals are, to be honest. Yeah, I'm I'm really interested what you're going to do in your podcast, John. Have you got an idea? Is it all set up? Like, yeah. Is it going to? What, can you tell us a wee bit about it? I'm interested what, in is, what is great? No, it's, um, it's a good excuse to look at the other podcasts, isn't it? Can't have it main podcast. <laughs> it is. I, I don't know a lot about podcasts, to be honest with you, but there's a gentleman called um, David McDonald, and David used to work for Ladbrooks. He used to be the guy that used to organise all the last Ladbrooks sponsorship and everything with the, with the, with the Scottish Premier League um, mm -hmm. and the SPL previously. Obviously, now it's the Scottish Premiership. Um, but... He approached me and he basically said, look, we'll get it all set up. He says, you know, an awful lot of people. He said, why don't we, why don't we start sort of, you know, building up a podcast for you? He says, you can get some great guests. And, and what I basically said to him was, I only want to do it if we go away from the Celtic thing. If we don't just do Celtic. Mm -hmm. Celtic players, I love Celtic. I've got a Celtic tattoo. I had a wonderful time there. Celtic is a huge part of my life. But I want to do this as I want to bring in Celtic um, people, Celtic guests, Rangers guests. One week I want to bring a surgeon in if he'll talk to us about, about health and, cool. and everything else. I want to maybe even take a man off the streets and just talk to him, see where he is, see what he's up to. Because that's the type of person I am. I'd rather mm -hmm. listen to a man off the street who's had a difficult time lately than listen to a superstar, to be honest, because I'm not really overly, you know, into stars and everything else. So I've met I, I, totally, I totally yeah. agree with that. I've always yeah. said like, podcasts, I want to talk to a binman. 
Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. What's your life as a bin man? And tell you, and how do you fit watching Fitbit in? And what, do you, what's, what do you have for your lunch? I love all that stuff. Uh, Greg, the, the, bin, the, bins get, the bins get collected in the morning and the footballs on at night. <laughs> so. I, know, I, mean, I mean, I want to know somebody that's done it all their days and the stories that they've had with bins. Just wee random things like that. I think that sounds... we, get, we, we, get, we, we get a lot of the football stories, don't we? We've heard a lot Aye. of them. We've heard yeah. them after dinner talks and hospitality lunches, we've all been, and they're great, don't get me wrong, they're enjoyable, they're good fun, but I just wanted it to be not so much about me, because mm -hmm. my story's out there, it's been out there a million times, you know, just about, I, I want to give something back, and with, with, the, with the people that I know, and, and the characters that I've met, um, you know, for instance, my first guest, I'll tell you, but my first guest on Tuesday is Jackie McNamara, yeah. simply because Jack, Jackie's doing all right. Yeah, he's doing okay, actually. So um, we're doing it on Tuesday. Obviously, we'll have to record it, and then the, the guys will edit it. I don't know when it will be showing and everything else. But Jackie's a great guest for me because I've roomed with Jackie at Celtic. Um, we both, you know, recently, Jackie, more so than me, has, has had his health problems as well, and he's come out of it with flying colours. He's doing Good. well again now. Good. You know, he had a testimonial at Celtic. He was let down by Gordon Strachan when Gordon Strachan sold him to Wolves and he brought in Paul Telfer. So there's, there's lots of things I can ask Jackie, but more so than anything else, I'm, I'm just going to ask him how he is. Right. How he's getting on, how was his wife, how was his children and all this sort of stuff, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And again, that takes it away from football. I know we're both footballers and there's football fans out there, Celtic fans will want to know the football stories. We'll touch on that. But more so, I want it to be um, more personal and let the guests just talk away. Just ask them a question. It's going to be difficult because, as you know, I like talking. <laughs> 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 just let the guests talk. And that's why I think it'll be more interesting than anything else. I'm just taking it away from the Celtic and the football and the Arsenal and the West Ham, all this sort of stuff. Because life, to me, football was a huge part of my life. But you go into training at nine o'clock in the morning and you finish at one. So that's four hours a day. Aye. What do you do for the other 20? <laughs> yes. go, to, go, to cruise and, go to cruise and get yourself some new Prada gear. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. But all joking aside, it's like 20 hours of the, the day you've got to live. Aye. And then you've got to, you've got to obviously organise your home. You've got to be happy where you are. The children uh, play a big, massive role. All these things, football, obviously then that's every day, but the other 20 hours of the day, people tend to look at you, oh, you're a footballer, you train, you've got a great life. But if your life mm -hmm. isn't right, when you finish away from the training ground and you're training, then the pitfalls yeah. are there. The bookies are there. 100%, you right? know, the pubs, the uh, great old, the pubs are there. Yeah. The bad characters are there. You know, the, the hangers ons. Everybody wants to hang on to you, man. If you're Everybody you're wants a piece place. of you. I am got I am got a Welsh I am got a Welsh jersey to my name. I won fifty one caps. Mm -hmm. I've given them all away. Aye, aye. I've got a son now who's asking me for a shirt. I've got to say I am got a shirt. Mm -hmm. So during my career I give it all away. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just saying because I'm not really I don't really have things up anyway, you know, pictures yeah, of shirts and everything else that they're all hanging up in Swansea and bars and pubs and everything else but um it's it must have been difficult for you John so obviously like back like touching on your career like you were like when you went to Arsenal for Luton you were the most expensive teenager at that time weren't you yeah yeah how did how did you cope with all that like I, I was in a bubble mate I was in a bubble um and I always say to young players now I, I try and say to them look Take everything in, everything you do, every game you play, every experience, take it in and embrace it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Because it happened to me so quickly. I, at 19, I became you know, a, a, a teenage sensation. I went to Arsenal for record money to have Britain's most expensive teenagers. Mm -hmm. How many teenagers in Britain play football? Exactly. And I was worth the most, yeah. you know? And then I went to West Ham for big money. Then I went to Wimbledon for record money. Then I came to Celtic for £6 million. So then big price tags followed me around everywhere else. And with big price tags become big pressure and big headlines. You see with those uh, big signing on fees, 
could you not buy back some of the jerseys and give your laddie one of them? <laughs> I could probably get hold of one, mate. I know what you're saying. And that's, that's a nice thought, nice thing to say. I could probably get hold of one if I needed to. My son's doing all right. He doesn't go without you know. But um, as I said, it's just, you know, things I used to do, boots and buy tickets for friends to come into grounds and, uh, and this and that. And it, it just puts it into perspective now when I've been living in Edinburgh for four years and I'm, I've been retired about 11 years. And you just wonder, you, your phone doesn't ring quite as often anymore. Uh, but it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing because I think sometimes you can have too many friends. I've got 2,000 um, numbers in my phone, but there's probably about five or six in there that I could really say, do you know what? Spend a bit of time with him. I really like him. I trust him. And trust for me is second only to health. You've got to trust. If you're going to go on with somebody as a mate and everything else, trust to me has always been, you know, the, the, the number one, number two thing after my health. Where there's no trust, there's nothing, you know? Well, that's, that's, a big part, that's a big part of your career as well. Like trust it. You've played under a lot of a lot of managers, obviously throughout your career, John. Mm-hmm. Um, did did you have that trust in George Graham when he brought you into Arsenal? Well, what happened with George, strangely enough, was um, George signed me, and then and then obviously I, I I started to play with Ian Wright, who was the England centre forward, and then George got the sack after mm-hmm. about a month because he took. He took a little bit of a backhander off a, off a Swedish agent, I think, or a Norwegian agent. Right. Um, and he lost his job because of that. And uh, apparently he gave the money back. So if he's going to get the sack, what's the point of giving the money back? You'd have kept it, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so George was sort of a short spell, really. I didn't really get to know George that well, although he signed me for the football club. George Graham's a legend at Arsenal. I think he's one of only two men that have won the double as a manager and a player at mm-hmm. Arsenal. A great disciplinarian, Scotsman. Um, so I didn't get to know George that well. And then it was um, Bruce Rioch for a spell. And then I worked under Arsene Wenger, who was just, um, he was just phenomenal, Arsene Wenger, the way that he just changed everything and, um, and, and made the players... Jesse got that little bit extra out of the senior players as well, the Tony Adamses and the, nice. the Steve Bowles, the Martin Keowns, the David Siemens. They will tell you now that, that, you know, just listening and adapting to what Arsene Wenger was, was, was trying to teach them, they did that. They tuned in and they say themselves now that Arsene Wenger put two or three years on top of their careers at that particular time when they were almost on their way out. But Wenger coming in, you know, give them a new lease of life, you know. John, I want to ask you, because we're going to be talking about Celtic, but you probably, as you say, you've been doing loads of podcasts through lockdown and you've probably covered it a million times. But take me back to when you turned up at Ibrox in the Wimbledon top. Um, I remember it as a wee guy. I remember being buzzing. I remember looking at the paper going, this will be a great signing. Yep, same. Um, I was shitting myself. Do you remember? Just like, I, I, was, I was shitting myself, man. Aye, it was, it was just, I, I was so excited that we were going to sign Big Bad John Hartson and then what happened? What happened was I was, um, I didn't have a favourite Scottish team. I'd only been to Scotland once in my life and that was on a pre-season tour with, with Harry Redknapp and West Ham. 1997, we played in uh, a, a testimonial at Ibrox, lost 3-0 and we played Celtic as well. Um, at the time, and that's the only time I'd ever been to Scotland ever in my life. And I had no allegiances at the time. I was playing for Wales, and uh, Mark Hughes came to see me, the Welsh manager. He says, "John, I think I'm going to have to leave you out this weekend of our game. We were playing Estonia away, which I thought not a bad game trip to miss anyway. <laughs> the log away Estonia." And he said to me, uh, "We've had a telegram coming to the hotel that." Rangers have bid £6 million for you and uh, they'd like to sign you. And so David Murray is sending his private jet down to Cardiff Airport. You've got to go and get yourself ready. Um, you know, we'll allow you to miss the game this weekend for us. This, this is your career. All the best. Now, for my dad, who was on 30 miles down the road in Swansea, my dad made his way up to Cardiff. We got a taxi into the airport and then it was the private jet. Uh, we flew up to Glasgow. Uh, we're in Glasgow in 40 minutes. 
I was met with a load of press at Glasgow Airport. I think I was um, equaling what they'd spent for Ronald de Boer. Um, Ronald de Boer was actually signing on the same day. So we take it into Ibrox and um, I'm walking down the side of the tunnel and I'm getting ready to sign for Rangers. I'm playing for Wimbledon at the time. Also, I'm with the Welsh team, but Wimbledon was my club team. And uh, Ronald's on the, he's in the centre circle in the middle of the pitch with his Rangers scarf like that. So I've gone, Ronnie, Ronnie. And he's looked over and I've said, give me two minutes. We, we'll do it together. Right. We'll pose together for the pictures or whatever it is. So he said, yeah, no problem. Great. You know, so I was up the tunnel. I walked in the dressing room to the left and um, Konchelskis was there. I'll bet uh, Bomber Brown and they're all high five, you know, what a sign. We can't wait to get you on board, John, and everything else. So then I get ushered off uh, to go for a, for a medical. Um, I had one scan on my knee. And then I come straight back. I think it was in Ross Hall somewhere in Glasgow yeah. City yeah. Centre. I had a scan. I was half an hour away um, in the car. We've got the scans. And then I would also agreed with Sir David Murray upstairs in one of his offices, uh, a five-year contract. Uh, I'm signing. All I had to do was pass this medical. So then um, I got to the hospital, did my scan, x-ray, everything else. And I'm, I'm with Dick Artecat in, uh, in one of the offices downstairs, away from David Murray's big sort of office and everything else, and all these mahogany chairs and the big table, the chairman's office, of course. So I go downstairs, I'm sitting with Dick Advocat, and uh, we've got the contract there, and I'm just waiting. <clears throat> and his, Dutch, um, his fellow Dutch doctor came in, and he said, look, I'm really sorry, Mr. Advocat. He said, we can't do the deal. So Dick Advocat, what, what, what are you talking about? You know, John's here, he's ready to sign. Um, and then they just basically pulled the plug. They said, we can't do the deal because there's something showed up on John's knee um, that we believe, you know, he wouldn't get through what we need him to get through in terms of the training and the games. And I was 26 years of age, prime of my life in terms of my career, scoring goals, you know, down south, representing my country. And I had Man United talking about me. I had other clubs I could have, you know, been interested with. And then within 10 minutes, I, I am back on the plane and I'm back down to Cardiff. And I, I basically failed the medical at Rangers because of, of, of a knee. Um, and then I'm, I'm not being, uh, a lot of people have said to me over the years, oh, John, they got you up there. That, that was just a publicity stint. It was this, it was that. And I genuinely believe that it wasn't. I think I genuinely believe that the, the physio come back, the Dutch doctor, and he must have saw something. In, in the knee that sort of prevented them going on and, and doing the deal. Um, did, they never, did they never show you what it was or anything no, like that? they never, never showed me nothing like that. And what was, what was a little bit pleasing for me was I went on from there six months later. I did a pre-season in St. Andrews with Coventry, uh, with Gordon Strachan. And, and what was pleasing for me more than anything else from a personal point of view was I went on to make 220 appearances then for Celtic. Uh, Martin only signed me for £6 million. I flew the medical and I made 220 appearances. I played more games for Celtic than what Ronald de Boer did for Rangers. I scored more goals than Ronald did at Rangers for the same money. And um, I, I never missed a game. I never missed a training session because of this so-called bad knee. Um, and the Celtic fans used to say to me, as they would, when you score, John run to the corner and rub your knee to the fans that have caused a riot. But <laughs> I, I, I never went, I never did that. I never did that because I just wanted to just, by scoring and by playing was enough to say, well, you got that one wrong, you know. Um, but what, what, what is unusual is, well, not so much unusual, but what I try and say is, is that, you know, I would have been a Rangers player because... Mm -hmm. I, I had nothing against them, you know, during that particular time. Um, I, I had no allegiances to Celtic. I hadn't experienced an old firm game. And I would have signed for Glasgow Rangers had they, you know, pursued with the medical. But, um, you know, that upsets one or two Celtic fans. But it, it's common sense. 
Ah. If I hadn't had any interest from Celtic and I got the goal, and I, I had no allegiances again. So, right. but you know, sometimes you just think things happen for a reason, and maybe it just maybe it just wasn't what meant to be. Is one of those things. But that is the gospel truth, and uh, that's exactly uh, in detail how, how things panned out. Like when you move to Celtic and you see Larson's there and Sutton's there. Mm. How daunting is that for you? Were they two there already? And you know you need to fight for a place to get in there. Well, How the year I got there, 2001, they, they, they just previously won the treble. Aye. Mm -hmm. And Henrik and Chris uh, had formed up this unbelievable partnership and they, they yeah. won the treble. Yeah. And I think they scored 66 goals between them, you know? And I've got to go in there mm -hmm. and upset the apple cart. I'm one of the record signings. I think the record signing was 6.5. I think there was a couple of us that were six. And I haven't come to sit on the bench. I haven't come to mess about here. I want to play. And for the first five or six games, um, Celtic did very well. They were winning. And I'm thinking, how on earth am I going to get in this team? But um, luckily for me, Chris Sutton and his professionalism and his, um, you know, the, he, was, he was such a great professional, great player. Chris, this one, he, he said it was okay for him to go and play in midfield and play at, 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 in the defence. And once I got in the team, I never came out. <clears throat> I never came out for five years. I had two back operations. But um, I was a constant player in that team. And I always say maybe with, with Hearts and Larson and Sutton in the one team, we're, always very, we're obviously much stronger than one of us sitting on the bench. Well, Henrik was never going to be sub. And Chris either, really. But um, Chris was... Um, you know, he, he could play in a number of positions, really. Um, he had a great engine. And um, you know, luckily for me, he, he said that, fine, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for John. Let John and Henrik play and I'll drop into midfield just off the front or I'll go and play centre-back. And we had a great spell. We had a great spell together at Celtic, as you know, the UEFA Cup final and, and all the trophies and everything else. Um, and it was a brilliant, brilliant part of my life. But... It was daunting, but I had to get in straight to I had to get in the team. And luckily, I, Martin O'Neill, who believed in me, which gave me that chance. Right. Aye. Aye, you caused me a few heartbreaks earlier, years, John. I won't lie. Oh, horrible shame. <laughs> yeah, horrible shame. I had a good run, to be fair. I had a really good run against Reeds. I think I scored the winning goal in four consecutive games. Oh, That's I remember. I remember, yeah. mate. I remember. Right. So, and it's just one of those things where you hit it right. off. And, and you know what it's like if... You, those are the games that you adhere yourself to the crowd. Uh, you know, those are the games where, and it's not just Glasgow. It, it's it's everywhere. It's Ireland. It's North America. It's New York. It's Canada. You know, Celtic and Rangers fans all over the world. You know, clubs and everything else. So when you win them games, they're a nightmare. When you lose them, you don't want to get your head off the pillow. But uh, when you win them, everybody feels it. Not just the players, the managers, the staff. The kit man, the tea lady, the supporters, the supporters abroad that, that tuned in. I think it's it's shown in over 300 countries, you know, this particular game, Celtic Rangers. Um, so when you get the winning goal, it's obviously very pleasing. And that's, that's why at that particular time, and even now, um, I have a great affinity with, with the Celtic fans. Right. Well, and you see how, you were talking earlier about, you have a wee bit of regret about how you looked after yourself when you played. Did you... Talk, talk, us, talk to us about that. Like, what this is, is, this what is, is great. Though, I love talking to, about stuff like this when it comes into yeah. folk being unfit. <laughs> Not that I'm saying you were unfit, right? But yeah. what you could have done better. Like, I know I'll always look back on my wrestling career and going, I should have got in a good nick, but I never did. Mm. So but Grado, see if you take that away for you. No, you're taking away a lot of your character. No, I know, no, it, I know that, I know that, I know that. But it still won't well, stop me for later on life going, why did I not just put in the in the gym and watch my diet and stuff like that? And it, it's good to hear for somebody else that, you know, you, you said yourself, you wish you looked, looked, looked after yourself better. Well, well, first and foremost, I was fit. I was fit. Aye. You had to be fit, otherwise I wouldn't have survived. I wouldn't have played the games. And you've got to be fit to play in Gordon Strachan's teams because Gordon, Gordon played till he was 39 and he based his emphasis on his players with, with fantastic fitness. So I was fit. Um, but if I'd have gone through my career a stone and a half lighter and I'd really knuckled down, done extra, watched my food, watched my drinking, because I loved the pint. I loved the pint with the lads and... Um, 
and everything else. I, and, and, and nowadays, tr- players don't drink. Um, you know, they, <laughs> they go and have a couple oh, of shots or whatever else. But it's maybe where I came from, Grado, because I'm from that area where I collected glasses in my local social club for a fiver on a Friday and Saturday night. My mum and dad be playing bingo. Or my, you know, and at the end of the night, my mum be having, you know, my mum would play bingo. My dad would be in the bar. And the only, the only time they'd see each other was at the end of the night in the hall for a slow dance. <laughs> you'd have all the boys, all, you'd have all the men in the bar, and you'd have all the women in the hall, you know, and, and the, the men would come in to watch the show and everything else. And that's why I, I'm a little bit old school in that sense, mm-hmm. you know, when I go to a basket or when I go and I go to social clubs and everything, I'm in my oils there. That's what I like, because that's the way I was brought up. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. the little pool table in the corner, jukebox, everything else. That, that was me. Right. Rather than going to a nightclub, it's so much better, man. It just sitting with the old, yeah. sitting with the old ones, getting a pint and talking away and talking about the news I, and all I, that. I, I, that's I, the I best did, times. I done a right in nightclubs. I, you know, I, I, I went a few times. You know, but, uh, <laughs> but no, I didn't miss out on anything. I've got to say that. Uh, but when I when I say that, you know, I just think I just think maybe maybe tuning in a little bit more and and obviously appreciating where I was, you know, and the level of career and the level of teams and the games I was playing. I was playing Champions League football. That is for the elites, you know. I played for Arsenal, double winners, and West Ham with Rio Ferdinand, and these guys playing for Wales with Giggs and Bellamy and Hughes and Russian. So I was at the elite level. I, I reached the peak of my career, 51 caps senior level for my, for my, uh, for my country. But I, I still believe in, in my own mind, if, if I tuned in and just looked after myself, maybe not gone for that pint, maybe being a bit, a bit lighter, um, I could have got around a bit more. I could have jumped higher. I could have lasted longer in games where Martin was bringing me off after 75 minutes because I was done and I'd already scored a couple of goals anyway. So he was quite pleased. I could have just gone on. And that's when I say that. But, you know, let's not, let's not, let's not get away, kind of away and think that I was unfit and I couldn't score goals and I couldn't get across people. You look at my videos that sell like 110 goals. You don't score that amount of goals. If you're I've unfit. never got the math. <laughs> <laughs> so I was fit, but I just, it's just myself. Um, right. I just feel I could have gone a bit higher. Gone. Uh, you were responsible for my ma winning hundreds and hundreds of money, right? Because she used to, like, touching on what Grado says, she, she used to say, I just love big hearts, and he's just a big cuddly guy. I just love him. So she would put 20 quid on you every week for the first goal, right? Mm-hmm. And honest to God, I ain't, I ain't down to you. I've had a few holidays and stuff like that, mate. <laughs> so, it's, it, like, you were, you were kind of like a, a, a housewife's favourite kind of thing, yeah, when yeah. you were at Celtic as well. You must have got some offers along the way, surely. <laughs> <It's steady>. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's got to watch this, you know. But um, no, as I said, you know, I, I was just very normal, very normal and a decent fella, five kids now. And uh, as I said, you know, I, I don't have an enemy really. I'm supposed this, you know, people say to me, John, who did you dislike? Who, who do you really hate? And I, I don't really hate anybody. I really don't. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, football is, I appreciate, you know, both sides, Celtic and Rangers, you know, there's a lot of rivalry, there's a lot of passion. Wouldn't go as far as saying hatred, I would just say, you know, passionate and, you know, that goes years, years and years gone by, you know, goals and, and winning games and this player and that player were favourites, they weren't so much favourites, they kicked somebody, they left a bit on that player when he was there and that. You're always going to get that, but I, I do enjoy the rivalry. Uh, a lot of, I've, got, I've got a lot of good mates, great, who've done work for my charity, always turns up, a great supporter of the John Artson Foundation. I've got good mates who are Rangers fans, uh, you know, and they often say to me, John, you know, you're a good lad, we can go out with the wives and have a nice meal, but you, you do appreciate on Saturday when, when, we, when we're playing against you, I'm going to give you pelters for 90 minutes. <laughs> no. And I'm like, well, fine, I can appreciate that, but... Uh, <laughs> That's what it's all about, though, man. That's what you exactly. Need. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I remember sitting at a table at John Hartson's uh, golf night. You're sitting Neil Lennon on one side and the goalie Andy Gorham on the other. We're all just talking away. It's brilliant. I love what right. I can on here on the story. It's back, be, back and forth. That's the way it should be. Yeah, I think it's charity. It's whenever there's a funeral. God bless the people that we've lost. You know, I remember Tom. Um, 
the great um, Billy McNeil um, and everything else, and some of the Lisbon Lions. You know, they used to, they used to. They, they, I think, and the same with um, uh, Walter Smith, Ali McCoy, you know, John Gregg. Mm-hmm. You know, they 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 carried um, Jimmy Johnson's funeral in from from the, the cortege. Mm-hmm. You know, outside Celtic Park, and you know, I think when it comes to charity or someone's life, then I think football becomes secondary. You know, absolutely. See, touching on touching on uh, getting back to what you were saying about you're doing your podcast now, John. Um, you've yeah. been you've been doing a bit of punditry for a while now. Um, mm. it, me personally, as a Celtic fan, I, I quite like listening to you because you tend to see the positives, right? But there's a lot of ex Celtic players who do punditry that don't seem to have a good word to say about the club. Can you, is that, you see, obviously you're not going to uh, divulge any information or anything like that, but when you're, when you're given that role, is there anybody that comes into your ear and says, listen, you need to touch on these points or anything like that? And, and it does tend to, I, I think the boys will probably uh, agree as well, Grado and Stephen, there's, there's pundits that do it in the, the other direction as well, but I tend to find people like Andy Walker and Chris Sutton, uh, sorry, not Chris Sutton, uh, Chris Commons, are really negative towards Celtic at times, and I don't know whether they've right got an axe to grind. I, I, I don't know if they've got an axe to grind with the club, but uh, maybe how their careers ended there. But it's what 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 do you think it is that that makes this come out of these people? I don't know. I can't really speak for Andy Walker, and you know Sky appoints him. Andy's been working at Sky now for a long time. Chris Commons, I think he still has a column, but I don't think he does a lot of sky these days. Um, but I can only speak for myself. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, if I'm, if I'm doing a Celtic Rangers game, which I've done, I've done many of them, and there's a, there's a you know, there's a, a blatant penalty, say, for instance, Rangers, and I say that's not a penalty, then I've got my producer in my ears saying, what, what bleeding game are you watching, John? That's not good for me. And I think the genuine Celtic football people that are watching the game at home will also go, John's bang on there. Chris Sutton does it very well. John's right there. That was a penalty. And I think sometimes when you duck out to them decisions, it goes against you. Because the Celtic yeah. fans, they see through that, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So first and foremost, you, you've got to call it as you see it. Um, yes, my allegiances are with Celtic. Chris Boy's allegiances will be with Rangers. Ali McCoy's allegiances... But when you're doing a game, you've got to be honest and you've got to call it as you see it. Um, you know, I, I've got massive respect for Celtic. I love the supporters. I can't go anywhere in the world without meeting any supporters. And I don't think you last. I don't think you last, especially on the television, if, um, if, if you're not sort of down the middle and calling games as you see them, you know. And people know. People know who you support. And, mm-hmm. and, and, the, and the companies try and balance out the studio. They try and put a Celtic and a Rangers man in there to balance things out and to balance the, you know, the, the commentary and the debates out and things like this. So I can only speak for myself and I try and call it as it is. I've been doing a lot of media work now. I don't know how long I'm going to keep doing it because I've got other things that I, you know, I might be looking at doing this. I think we all get a shelf life in, in certain things. And um, there's younger... Uh, pundits coming through there's there's editors changing there's producers changing there's players retiring from football they all want my job you know they're <laughs> articulate they do their prep they're good looking Don, we're, we're exactly the same yeah it <laughs> changes and I think, you, I think you've got to evolve sometimes do you know what I mean you've got to evolve you've got to have something you know in the background that if that stops you can move into that and it all doesn't finish there and I'm yeah. starting to be at that position now, to be honest. I've done an awful lot of traveling. For the last 13 years, I've done some big shows for the BBC, for Satanta, for um, BT Sport, and I'm still doing a little bit with Sky and the radio, this and that and the other. Mm-hmm. But I just think I'm 45 and I've been doing it a long time. I don't know if I want to be doing media when I'm 50. You mm-hmm. know, so who knows what's around the corner, do you know? Aye. 
Definitely, man. That's what I was going to say. We, we, we kind of feel the same way. I mean, we've been doing this podcast for nearly a year now together, and there's people just starting up their own podcasts willy nilly, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> <laughs> feels like everybody right. wants their job, John. I just, want to, I just want to take part. I don't want to take over. <laughs> Listen, I'm not being rude. I'm really enjoying this, but I get my kids at half past three. Yeah, right. So right. I, can do, I can do a couple more, and then i got to get out of the house. My wife's right. in class. tell you. I tell you what we'll do it then. I'm here on my own, Will. Here she is. Oh, oh you got oh, one as well. Be you I got two more questions. Right, I tell you, I tell you what we'll do week. then. I tell you what we'll do then, John. Every week we do a quiz. Right, John. So every week on Football Daft, we want to put our guests' football knowledge to the test with our 90 second quiz. Okay. And after last week, we have a, well, we've got a new leader on the board. It's John Sutton, who's on 15. We've got Mark Wilson, Keith Lasley, they're tucked in behind with 14. The good doctor, Kenny Duker and Harper, are just behind in third place with 13. Other selected scores include Barry Ferguson on 12, Murdo McLeod on 10, Marvin Andrews on 5, and Falkirk manager David McCracken still at the bottom with 1. Is there anybody there you want to beat? I want to beat them all, but I probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> right, mate, so we've got 90 seconds, right? You can't pass, you must give an answer, OK? Right, producer John's on 90 seconds on the clock. There is. Right, here we go, John. Who is the current manager of Hearts? Uh, Robbie Nielsen. Aaron Hickey signed for which Italian club? Oh, uh, he signed for Perugia. Who currently sits top of the Scottish Premiership? Rangers. Who did you score your 100th Celtic goal against? Okay. Name one of John McGinn's footballing brothers. I know. Played for Hibs. Uh, Paul. What league are Stenhouse Muir currently in? Uh, Scottish Division League One. Who is the current manager of Swansea City? Uh, that would be uh, Cooper. How many goals did you score for Coventry? Six. Who do the Shire share a stadium with? Oh, Oldham. Name two of the three sides who have started the English Premiership season with three wins out of three. Time. I'll let you answer it though, John. So say it again. Name two of the three sides who have started the English Premiership season with three wins out of three. Everton. And, um, well, she's done it. Liverpool and Leicester. <laughs> you, you only Everton had to give us one. You got it oh, right. Oh, I didn't have to give us two. I think you two told you. Oh, fuck, sorry. <laughs> Aye. Nope. How many did no I get? Actor, no, I mean, no pals act, do you know what I mean? How many did I get? <laughs> Right, John. Right, wrong answers. Uh, Stennis, we are currently in League Two, the Shire Shire Stadium with Falkirk, and we'll give you a half point for the last one. So, uh, seven and a half points, John. Well done, John. Well done. That's not too bad, man. Bad. John, thanks for picking your time up and coming on. I really appreciate Bye. it. Cheers, all, all, the all the best. All thanks the best, John. Good catch up with you. Thanks very much. Yeah, pal, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Right, Troops, good show, nice insight to Big Hartson's lifestyle and that, good to see he's healthy and over the worst state and all that. Good By show. the way, he, look, he looks better now than he did when he was playing football, doesn't he? Aye, he does, he looks good, man, he looks good. Aye. Aye. It's good to talk to John Hartson, he does well with his charities and stuff like that, so it was a good Aye. conversation. John, I think, but exceeded any expectations that we'd ever have if we ever got him on the show, an absolute star. Uh, Absolutely delighted of producer John to come on and tell his life story about how he made fucking Charlotte Church tea and that kind of <laughs> shit. Good stuff, man. Good, sh- good, good shit. Probably good the shit. best Legends lot they've ever had. Ah, no, man. I mean, fuck that, man. Yeah, but, uh, Definitely aye. a legend. <laughs> but, Troops, great show. Big European night for both sides of the Glasgow Tour tomorrow. So, we shall see yes. how it on and we will speak next week. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! Yes. Uh, what about it? Well, you told us. Did you not say once? Lads, how long have you been sitting here for already? I've got a big brother story since have I've been on the Legends Lottery. Aye, aye, aye. I'm, I'm mates with Eugene, who was one of Oh, Eugene! From back in the day. I'm Eugene, mates with him. 
Oh my god, man. He was like a pure, did, like a pure kind of... Geeky guy. Look at him, he's Googling Eugene the new. Oh, I know who he is! Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm, I'm mates with Eugene, so I can give you a Big Brother story, because, uh, aye, there you go. I Mate. don't remember. I don't know. What, what one was he the runner up in? Aye, he was... Uh, the one with was... in it. The one with Cozy in it was the boy who... Oh! ...that won it. Big Brother 6, Eugene. How did you meet him? I At a fucking Poseidon. Star Wars convention or something? No, I worked beside him. He was a... Uh, no, it was a... Uh, saved by the Bell reunion. Uh. <laughs> anyway, Saved by the Bell's coming out next month. Uh, remake it. Is it? Uh, no, a remake, but you know, 20 years later, I think Slater and Screech, you know, you're... Well, how is it following it, ma'am? Is it good? I don't like, like, Screech for Saved by the Bell. Jesus, you don't do it like, like Screech for Saved by the Bell. Dustin Diamond here. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dustin Diamond. Right, Troops, I'm going to boost. Right, all the best. Yeah, wait a minute, we never get John's Big Brawl story. That's all right, we can save it to next week. Oh, all <laughs> right, okay. <laughs>